I firmly believe every household should have a stethoscope among their medical supplies at their house. So today we're talking about some different types of stethoscopes that are out there and what you should be looking for when you're purchasing a stethoscope. Today we're going to be diving into stethoscopes. We're going to look at some of the different features of different types of stethoscopes and hopefully that will help you to understand what to look for when you're looking for a stethoscope for your medical kit. If you find some of this information from this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a like on this video. That would help us out. Leave us a comment below if you have any questions over any of the stuff we're talking about today. Hit that subscribe button and make sure your notifications are on so you're alerted when we post future content. All right, so what is a stethoscope? Well. This thing I got around my neck is a stethoscope, and you've probably seen it, uh, if you've never used one, you've probably at least seen one in a TV show or movie somewhere. Um, it's kind of an iconic piece of equipment for a doctor. You throw a white coat and one of these around a neck and everyone thinks, oh, that must be a doctor. What is this exactly? Well, this is a diaphragm on one side connected to some tubing that then goes to an earpiece that goes in your ears. It allows us basically an extension Rather than having to put our ear directly on someone's chest, we have this extension now to where we can place this chest piece on their chest, we can place the ear piece in our ears, and we can listen through this. Now, it's not just for the chest. There's a lot of different uses for the stethoscope. So not only can you use a stethoscope to listen to lung sounds and have an idea of what's going on inside the lungs, we can use this on the heart to listen to heart tones and have a better idea of blood flowing through the heart. We can also put this on carotid arteries and listen for what's called brutes, which is the sound of turbulent blood flow. This would give us an indication if someone has plaque buildup in their arteries. Um, we can also use this in some cases to be able to tell if someone has a fracture. If we listen on one side of a bone and we use a tuning fork or some type of high-pitched uh, noise and place it on the bone on the other end, we're listening through there. We can. If we get that to resonate all the way through the bone, we know that bone's connected. If it's separated, we won't get that passing all the way through the bone. So that's something that's not as commonly used, but still is an option that you can use these stethoscopes for. And the most common use for a stethoscope is probably to take a blood pressure. And this is a basic vital sign that everyone should understand. And this is one reason I think you should have one in your home, in your medical kit, and available to be able to take a blood pressure. Lung sounds are great, and if you're worried about some potential wheezing, some potential fluid in the lungs, we can listen. If you're not trained to listen to that, you're going to have a hard time picking up on that. So if you have one, you have to practice with it. But the blood pressure is the critical point here. You need to be able to take an accurate blood pressure. And if you have an electronic blood pressure machine, those can get off, and you, they need to be recalibrated. So a lot of times the manual version is the best way if you're worried about high blood pressure, low blood pressure, the manual blood pressure with a stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer, that's the best way of getting an accurate blood pressure. All right, so I have a couple different stethoscopes with me today, and we're gonna start from the cheapest one and work our way up and talk about some of the different features you get along the way. So this stethoscope here is a really cheap stethoscope. You can find these on Amazon. You can find these on our website. Um, this one runs $8 on our website. We include these in our basic diagnostic kits. This is absolutely fine for taking a blood pressure if the person has a decent blood pressure. And you can sometimes listen to breath sounds with it. If you have any difficulty with hearing, you're hard of hearing in any way, um, you may need something a little bit better than this for lung sounds. Also, if you have someone that has a faint blood pressure, you may have a hard time picking that up with this stethoscope. This is very basic. It's got a really cheap diaphragm on the front. Um, it does not amplify the noise like these more expensive stethoscopes would. But for someone that's starting out, for someone that is learning, I think this is great to have because it's cheap, it gets you in, and then you can figure out what stethoscope you actually wanna spend money on. Stethoscopes can get very expensive. So practice with this, start learning with this. Um, if you break it, mess it up, whatever, it's not a big deal. And then figure out if you wanna get a stethoscope, and a lot of times there's options to get them engraved in certain colors and whatever you want. Something specific for you. But take some time after you play with it and learn how to use a stethoscope, then you can figure out exactly what stethoscope you wanna get based on your needs and how often you're gonna use it. If you're using a professional setting, I'd recommend a better one. If you're just using it to take a blood pressure at home, this one will suffice. So if you're buying your first stethoscope, I would recommend this one. Get used to it, practice it before you spend money on a nice one. 
Um, this is also the one that we put in our responder bag, which is an EMT level bag. And I do that because people are picky about the type of stethoscope that they carry. So I want the option of a stethoscope in there, but then at some point an EMT is probably gonna buy their own stethoscope that's specific for them, carry that in their kit. But another perk to this is if you have a CPR call where you need to verify lung sounds or something, and this one ends up getting really messy or you have a traumatic call and it gets bloody, you do have the option of just throwing this away um, rather than having to work on cleaning every little crack and crevice on this. So um, if you don't need really high definition sound, I would still resort to using this for some of those messier calls. All right, so next up, we'll talk about this ADC stethoscope, which is a Adscope 603. So this is made by ADC. Um, they are made outside the U.S., but they're assembled and put together in the U.S. Um, one thing I like about this versus a Lippmann, which is made by 3M and is probably one of the most popular uh, stethoscopes out there, this is a good bit cheaper than a Lippmann for what I believe to be the same quality sound you're going to get out of it. Um, you're paying for the name brand with a Lippmann. This is an ADC. You get a little bit cheaper. These also have lifetime warranties. And on top of the warranty, they will send you parts for these if they break. Great warranty, great tool, and a fraction of the price of the Lippmann. So that's why I like the AdScopes. So on this AdScope, you'll notice we have something a little bit different. Um, on one side, we have the diaphragm, just like we had on the cheap stethoscope. On the other side, we have a bell. It's open. It does not have a diaphragm. So with these two options, I can now hear different pitched noises based on what side I use. So this bell does one of two things. One, uh, it will allow you to pick up lower frequency tones than the diaphragm will. Two, it gives you a smaller surface area. So if you have one stethoscope and you have to take a blood pressure on a child and their arm is a lot smaller, or you wanna get a good specific uh, heart tone on a child, um, you're going to have a better chance of doing that if the surface actually fits the anatomy rather than a large diaphragm that may not get good surface contact on a much smaller uh, body. So this is a smaller side for pediatrics or for smaller patient, but also it's for lower tones. So if we're listening to a blood pressure and we're having a hard time hearing it on one side, we can swap to the other and try that. Um, but most of the time we're going to be listening for lung sounds on the diaphragm side and something more like uh, some heart tones on the lower frequency side of the bell. Now one nuance to be aware of here, if I need to swap this from the bell side to the diaphragm side, this literally turns and clicks one way or the other. So it doesn't work until you swap it. So if you ever go to take a blood pressure or listen to lung sounds and you're listening and you don't hear anything, there's good chance that this is turned the wrong way. So make sure that you adjust that back. You can look down in the hole on the bell and make sure that it's open. And then you know if you click it back that the diaphragm should be open. I don't recommend sticking this in your ear and smacking on the end because it is very loud. So be careful when you do that. You can lightly tap on one side to figure out what side it's open to, or you can simply look down there and adjust it. So last but not least, I have a AdScope. This is a AdScope 600, which is a cardiology series by ADC. So it looks very similar, but you'll notice that we only have a diaphragm on one side. We don't have a bell on the other side. So a cardiologist is a very specific type of doctor. So you would think he would have more specialized tools. So why doesn't he have a bell? Well, this actually is specialized. So this diaphragm is what we call a tunable diaphragm. So because of this rubber around the outside that holds this diaphragm in place, the amount of pressure that we put on this diaphragm is gonna change whether or not it picks up high frequency or low frequency sounds. So if I lightly place this against a chest wall or against skin somewhere and listen, I'm gonna be picking up those low frequency sounds. If I want to listen to high frequency tones, I need to place firm pressure on the area where I'm oscillating. So when I push that further into the chest piece, it actually cuts off a wider part where that sound can bounce around, narrows that down a little bit, basically changes the physical structure inside of this chest piece a little bit, um, changes the resonance, and allows you to be able to hear those higher pitched tones. So this still can do high and low pitched, but based on how much pressure you put on there. Now, 
I've seen a lot of people that actually have these stethoscopes because they're the expensive ones, they're the cool ones, and they want to have the best, and they have no idea how to actually tune that. So if you're going to carry one of these and use these, understand that difference because whether or not you just slap it on someone's chest or you're leaning over somewhere and you're putting more pressure than you realize, that could be affecting the tones and actually what you're hearing through that stethoscope. Another couple qualities of a good stethoscope would be to make sure that the head is a stainless steel. They make some of the cheaper ones, the lightweight ones, out of aluminum. The aluminum does not um, let the sound pass through as well. The sound quality on an aluminum one is not near what a stainless steel one would be. So the steel is definitely preferred there. Um, you want to make sure that you have a dual lumen if you want a nice stethoscope. So this actually has two different uh, tubes that pass in here. It looks like one, but there's it's split in the middle. That isolates the sound, separates the sound, allows the sound to go independently into each ear. That helps isolate the sound so I can hear clearly um, and that's just a quality of a nicer stethoscope. So there are a lot of other nuances about stethoscopes. There's a lot of different variations between the different types. You can debate the Lippmann versus ADC stethoscope all day long. People do that. Um, but I do think ADC is a solid stethoscope uh, for the money that you're spending for it. Um, it's definitely something that I would invest money in if you're going to be using this on a regular basis. If not, you may want to stick with the cheap one, at least to be able to listen to some basic lung sounds and take a blood pressure every now and then. But let's go over a few other uh, things on a stethoscope, more on how to actually use this. So as you notice, there is some curvature on these earpieces here. They curve forward. Make sure that forward curving is going in your ears going forward. I think now that everybody's wearing Apple AirPods, it makes a little more sense that your ears don't go straight in the side of your head. There's a little bit of curvature to that. So we're fitting these into that natural curvature. I've seen people put these in backwards, go take a blood pressure, and they say, I can't hear anything. It's like, well, you completely occluded the little hole on the end. So make sure they are facing forward and that will help you out tremendously. Now, I don't recommend sticking these in your ears, walking around and letting this thing bang around because you could potentially go deaf. It's very loud. So now that I take the end or the chest piece of my stethoscope, I'm going to hold this. And everything in listening and making sure I get clear sound passage through this is about sound isolation. I don't want any other sounds affecting this. So don't let this bump on the table. Don't let this swing back and forth. We want everything still. We want to isolate this. So the only thing that's touching is our hands on the end, the patient where we're listening, and our earpieces. Also, if you're bumping up and down in an ambulance um, or there's motion or movement around you, you want to isolate. I don't want to prop my arm up on something that's bouncing and vibrating. Doing so will allow all those sound waves to travel right through my bone that's sitting on the table up and I'm going to hear a lot of that. So isolate my arms, make sure that there's no other sound, make sure these are in my ears, nothing's touching it, and then listen. When we listen, we want to put this directly on the skin. If we listen over clothing, you're going to be able to hear any rubbing of that clothing on that diaphragm and you're not going to, you're, there's going to be more material between what you're trying to listen to and where we're actually trying to get that to go. So we want this diaphragm right on the skin. So, so if you have to pull the shirt down a little bit, place this directly on the chest, that'll get good contact and then you can also adjust that frequency as needed. Um, for breath sounds, we're probably going to want that higher frequency. So go ahead and get, give some good solid pressure. Listen, have them take a breath in, out. Do that again if you have to. Then compare to the other side because you want to compare side to side and see if one sounds better than the other, different than the other. So we're kind of comparing the two there. Um, for a blood pressure, um, just remember that the artery is not in the middle of the arm. We're going to move it over to the side. That's another common problem I see is people slap it right in the middle and the artery actually runs on the inside of the arm. So make sure we slide that over, hold that in place. You can either hold it on the top. I usually use my thumb because I'm doing the blood pressure in one hand and I've got my thumb holding this securely on their arm with the other. So um, just play with this, practice with it. It's something that uh, does take some time to get used to. The first time you take a blood pressure, you're like, I don't know what I'm hearing. And then once you do it a bunch, it's easy and other people will be asking you for help. So like anything you have in your medical kit, know how to use it, practice with it, prepare for the time you have to use it ahead of the time when you actually have to use it. As always, stay vigilant and stay safe.